and welcome. This is Moons of Ascension. We're having a round table discussion tonight with me, Jen Berryhill, as well as Lily Carroll and Zoe Ann Bell and Melanie Kay, who are both down in the UK, I'm sorry, not the UK, in Australia. <laughs> <laughs> Soma was going to plan to join us tonight from um, Ireland and um, she's having some technical difficulties. Maybe she'll pop in with us here shortly. But um, we're going to kind of just dive right in. Um, we're in some really intense energies and we're going to share a little bit about what's going on and hopefully give you all some amazing tools and insight and some clarity for your path that you're on right now in this time of ascension. So I'm Jen Berry Hill, your host and facilitator tonight with Moons of Ascension. And um, I'm here holding the grid line in Colorado near the Rocky Mountains along with Lily Carroll. So Lily, I'll have you introduce yourself and we'll just go around the room from there. So I'm Lily Carroll. I'm up in Fort Collins, Colorado, um, the other side of the Front Range. And I have Earth Star Healing Center here. And I'm just holding space and following fallen spirit. Awesome, thank you. Let's go to you, Zoe. Hi there, so I'm Zoe. I'm in, here in Sydney, Australia. So holding space, anchoring, holding in the lines, serving where I can from body work, breath work, just really supporting the healing journey for individuals. So holding in the light down here in Sydney. Thank you. Thanks for coming back on tonight. And you, how about you, Melanie Kay? Yeah, hi. I'm um, I'm here in Australia right now. I'm on the move, just working some of these grid lines and some of these anchor points that are wanting to be re-anchored, doing some earth activation work. Um, I'm working on a website, Star Body Earth. It's coming along. I'll have some course materials and some earth activation tours coming up in the new year. So um, yeah, that's my work. And I'm an energy worker, I'm a somatic psychotherapist. I do individual work as well, but mostly I've been focused on um, working with the crystalline grid for the last five years, so, yep. Awesome, well, it's really great to be back here with you ladies again. Um, we are experiencing a lot of intense shifting and energy, and we were chatting a little bit before we started the recording and got to kind of tune in with each other and, and found a theme that's already been developing within our kickoff to this new moon. Um, so I want to just share with you a little bit first that um, we are now in this new moon of the firefly. So some of the content that you're going to hear tonight is going to be um, based on the teachings that have come through from Star Knowledge brought to us by Chief Golden Light Eagle, Lauren Zephier. Um, he co-authored a book called The Symbols Book, and we've been working with the Earth Star Calendar for many years, um, you know, working with the influences and stargates and moon uh, teachers and guides and guardians that come along for us to access for our, our personal ascension and growth. So we're going to be bringing in a little bit about what's going on there, and then we're going to open it up to more of an organic discussion because we all have some insight that we can share that would be um, possibly useful for all of us as we're navigating this big shift. I don't know. I don't know what else to call it. I just feel like there's something really major going on right now um, on all levels. So let's just kick it off and start with... Um, so the Earth Star calendar, it starts with the Buffalo Moon, and then it moves to the Grandfather's Moon, then it goes to the Whale Moon, moving into the Eagle Moon, and into the Butterfly Moon, the Tree Moon, then the Turtle Moon, and now here we are in the Firefly Moon. So this is the eighth dimensional moon influence for this particular yearly cycle that we're in. So every new moon opens up a new stargate. It activates a new test. There is a um, star path that we work with, as well as a star DNA activation point within our body. So I'll just share a little bit about what, what's going on there. So we are in the Stargate <coughs> of Innocence, and the star DNA activation comes to us with Arcturus. And the, the activation point within our body is the clavicle. So these two bones here, the clavicle, 
kind of represent the access into different realities, multiple realities. It's where the past and the and past and the future really become one. And it's if you look at it like um, two choice points, and that is very symbolic for what this activation is as well, because we are being tested in our, let's see, this is the test of ways of wisdom and the Akasha knowledge in our labors, mind, action, and thought. And so with that bridge of time, the clavicle, so the past and present being one, you know, we're opening travel to parallel worlds. And so this is access into what is known as Zamp as well as Middle Earth, and what I love to hear as the imaginations of Mother Earth. And so um, there's a lot of magic um, and a lot of connection within nature and our natural ways when we're starting to work with this moon influence right now. And it's the firefly moon. And so the firefly working with innocence um, they work with the spiritual growth of all. So the symbol is the spiritual growth of man. And I will try and pull that up in a little bit to show you what that um, symbol looks like that you can use to activate to help you on your ascension. Um, but so really the stargate of innocence, it's, that, it's the time of sacredness. And so it's kind of like that, that energy of when we were first born, you know, that really tender, young time in our lives when we were really, really small. And it was that time of purity and that time of spirit. And it's, it's like the God time. And, you know, we have to remember that last time or the first time actually that we first lost our innocence. And so this, this moon can feel really intense because this is the time to go deep within, kind of like a soul searching, which can sometimes feel like a dark night of the soul because our shadows are being brought up for us to look at and heal. And so this can be a really intense time. So the idea is to go back into the time when we first remember having lost our innocence. And this often has come through for us through a traumatic event a time when we were given a rule, a time when we heard, don't do that, don't do this, that's bad. And we bounce into shame, we bounce into guilt, and we bounce into fear. That is the moment when we lost our innocence. And so the work that it takes to go back into that time, it takes courage, it takes bravery, because that is the place that we most resist. But it is the time now when we're super supported to go into that realm and to bring love and healing to the aspect of us that wants to re return to the light, to return to our sacredness. So this is the growth of man, the spiritual sacredness on our path. And so... Uh, let's see. I think... I'm going to let that sit for just a minute because it opens the door to the topic of innocence and some ways that we can do the work that we can, you know, return to our light because the Firefly Nation, they're here and they, they symbolize the colors of the rainbow. They, they symbolize the internalized colors of our aura uh, and the power within that light. And we can call upon them to help us in this time of great healing. And all they ask for in return are just prayers for them. Prayers for their love, prayers for their light, and prayers for their protection. And so I'm going to open it up. I feel like, Lily, if you want to kind of just jump in and share a little bit about what's coming in for you that you would like to share about the Firefly Moon or anything else that was brought through so far. Well, I just feel like right now it's so important to be part of nature. And um, I just feel like that turtle moon really shifted things for me, made things a lot easier. And I just feel like I'm just kind of rolling with it. You know, I, I've been learning how to make videos. I've been doing all of these things and it's just, it's just falling into place because I'm not resisting. I'm just allowing. 
but I spend every morning and every evening in the garden, just talking to the plants and watching them grow and watching the birds. And, and so I feel like people that have a disconnect to nature are having more of a difficult time um, because we need to return to that flow. We need to return to that, you know, listen to spirit, listen to our guidance and go with that flow. And I feel like the more we do that, the easier it's going to be. And, and we will have challenges. We always do. But I just, these opportunities are just falling into place. And it's just so exciting. Um, you know, today I just got the application for speaking at ESETI. And that's been on my, my bucket list for years. And last summer I wanted to go and I asked Spirit and Spirit said no. And I was really disappointed. And I was like, but, but I want to go, you know, but but things happen in our lives, you know, Eagle passed and, and I needed to be there. And so we have to understand they're not giving us all the details. They're just, so we just have to ask each day, you know, where am I best in service? Where do I need to put my energy and, and work with, with protection, work with the energies, make sure we're grounded, make sure we're connected. Um, you know, I'm lucky to be here in the trees and with a lot of animals. And so that's where I, I'm best placed. But for those that are, are trying to find that groundedness, I, I really feel like camping and going to nature, you know, weather permitting and climate permitting is so important right now. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, and I love that, you know, that connection into nature is so critical, I think, for so many reasons, you know, and the, you know, if we look at the firefly, you know, they, they're, they're in the fields, they're in the meadows, they're in the trees, and you don't, re you rarely see them in the city. And that's part of the teaching that it talks about with this symbol, you know, is like that reminder, like, hey, <laughs> your time can be so supported just by going out and spending time with the plants and the animals and being in the sun. So thank you so much. Yeah, that's beautiful. And Zoe, do you want to go ahead and chime in as well? Yeah, there's what I've been tuning into and there's that real, there's a lot of clarity coming through for people and there's that real going inwards again and really connecting in nature, um, connecting with the sun, really getting grounded and that time of curiosity of sense of wonder which then also ties into the innocence of that innocence as a child so there's been a lot of playfulness coming through um, and lightness and also lightness around others with however they're responding or reacting and um yes yeah, so that it's felt very light it's things are moving fast so things are moving and coming to us far faster opportunities, the more we release, the more we let go, the more that we trust, which is very childlike anyway, because then there's no reason not to trust when you're in that beautiful, pure source state of curiosity, of wonder. So yeah, it's felt it's like every day, it definitely feels lighter, like every day it's that divine opportunity where you get to create. And yes, to tune in and ask, what, where am I guided today? What is coming through? And that may mean simply being still and seeing what's happening in your body. So there have been a lot of messages coming through from the body tissues, giving messages to be still rather than rushing, and allow whatever need releases need to come up and really giving yourself permission to honor that as you know nothing happens by running on the hamster wheel which then develops trust in people and then they learn how to trust and have faith in the divine timing so that's really what's been coming through because then we can shine like the little bright fireflies right when we replenish and we nourish then we then naturally it flows through and it, it connects with others in our community. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And you know, like going inside and and you know doing this healing work, you know, we're we're activating the cellular memory within us. And so that, 
you know, came through as you were talking about the, the body tissues and just how so much of what we hold has been an emotion and a thought, you know, and being able to honor whatever it is that's there um, and letting it move out, you know, surrender to that flow and, you know, gently and um, calmly and gracefully, you know, allowing that energy to transmute um, as best as we can when things are hot and spicy in the collective. <laughs> So Melanie, what, what would you like to contribute at this point in our conversation? Oh, yeah, I think you're on mute. Hold on. Thank you. Yeah, I'm just um, taking in so much from all of your shares, but I'm really tuning into just this last week and how much shedding happened. You know, I really feel like there was a whole skin that shed off my body and um, and in that, like when you were talking about innocence and that baby energy, there's, there's a particular kind of rawness about that too. You know, when you do, when you are in the newness, like there is that rawness and, and just, yeah, that pureness and what we were talking about before we even hopped on about how much we need to actually be protected in that, you know, we actually do need to like put our protection on. And for us to like have that organic, natural unfoldment of the rawness and the newness and the innocence. And I'm just thinking about that too, as, as, we, as we touch back into innocence, I was at a dance last night, except dance, and I got so playful and so jovial with a couple of the dancers. I mean, we were gar like roaring at each other and jumping and like doing this whole animalistic play and dance. And it was so funny and so joyful we're just cracking up and we're like people made space for us in the middle of the dance floor to like me and like two or three other people were doing this and I was thinking wow that's so interesting how when we are in our childlike state um you know the adults around us kind of make space for that play and that innocence and it's like kind of a natural thing to do when you see somebody in that in that way if we're in living and breathing and expect experiencing life in a respectful community you kind of make space for that and um and it's not until later that you get the awareness to say oh maybe, maybe there's other people here and they're doing serious things and you know like I wasn't aware of that at all you know <laughs> so there's something about the innocence and being a little bit um I don't even I don't know how to say it but maybe somewhat mindful that in your play you know it, it can sometimes um, step into other people's space without you knowing or in that innocence it might step into people's space that's kind of something that's coming through right now and and um yeah so that that um if people aren't on that same wavelength and can't respect that and you, you got to be careful that's what I'm kind of tuning into so that's a little bit there yeah no that's a good way to put it stepping into someone's space because I had a very traumatic experience this week where I stepped into somebody's space driving my car and it just ignited an episode of absolute road rage against yeah. me and that was just really bizarre you know like and the person was just completely out of control and you know I just had to sit and remain calm and not give it any energy and that can be really tough especially when you feel threatened like your life is feeling threatened um, you know, and I just allowed that energy to roll past me as best as I could. Um, cause I think, you know, it's almost like there's this force that's trying to seek the light, but they can't handle it or they don't want to, or they want to snuff the light, whatever that counter polarity is. Um, you know, I mean, it feels like we're really, really polarized. So there's like, you know, really, really big light. And then there's really, really big dark. And we're kind of going at it a little bit here together. And so, <clears throat> but I wanted to tune into, you know, because a big part of this moon cycle and the teaching that comes through with the Makawa Chaki Chocha on the Firefly teaching, you know, it, it's about bringing the unconscious conscious. And so, you know, when we're, choosing the path of light 
um, you know, our, our subconscious will always choose the light path, the path of sacredness. And so it takes a lot of like, cl like clean, pure energy to be in a sacred way, you know, and, you know, yet we're challenged with tests and, you know, disappointments still might come through your field, you know, something that you are really attached to might have ended and very unexpectedly. That also happened to me this week. And, um, you know, so these are big nudges to really pay attention to because we, we are being realigned, whether we want mm -hmm. to or not, mm -hmm. to something that is going to be more sacred. And so instead of kicking and fighting and, and going against it and denying it, I mean, let's give ourselves permission to, to just go in a new way, be in a new flow. We are officially in the kickoff of the new beginning. If you were yeah. at Sundance last year, it's now. I thought it already started, but no, it's now. Like everything that I was experiencing on Monday completely shifted and changed on Tuesday, very unexpectedly and very, very beautifully as well. And so I wanted to just share because um, part of what I do for my work is I assist people with their shadows and healing their shadow beliefs and helping them find new empowering beliefs that can support them on their journey of ascension. And so, um, you know, just to talk a little bit about what might be your process for how you work with your shadow self, how do you bring yourself into the light um, to bring that deeper level of healing. And if that's not something that you want to share, maybe you could share some ways that you do like a practice or structure for protection for yourself in these times. And so um, I'll open it up back to you, Lily, whatever you want to share on that note. Well, my life for the past decade has been pretty much on call with clients. And so I have to be ready. Um, you know, no one has a, a crisis or an accident on, in a timely manner. And so I start my day with usually with a shower clearing and then, you know, do a grounding. And, and so it's, it's all meditative throughout the day. And that's just how I found to be able to clear. I used to have recurring dreams of not being able to take a shower. And it was so, you know, there'd be something in the shower or there wouldn't be a shower. And I understood that that's where I go to let go of the day before or, or anything that I need to release from maybe what I've picked up from a client or picked up from a situation. And then I do full, you know, full house clearing. And so I'm starting to put them all on, on my website so people can look at them because we have to pick and choose, you know, it, it's not something you, you don't do the same thing every day. You may do something and you don't feel a shift. And so then you need to add on something or shift something. And so it's been, for me, it's been a decade of, of finding the right processes. Um, and, and I've been lucky enough to be in a space where I can keep it clear. I'm not in a big household. I'm not in the city. And so I'm able to keep my space clear and, and I created my healing space so that I have a sanctuary and that's where I go to think, that's where I go to connect. And I really feel that everyone needs to have that, whether it be in your closet or your bedroom or, you know, the guest room in your house. Oh. house create an altar, you know. Sorry, your your um your audio and video like like stalled. <laughs> oh no, it went on a delay. Okay, for just a second. So maybe back up like fifteen seconds and start. You just said um create somewhere in your house like maybe an altar. That was what it ended with. So create. So what I ended up doing is I have two altars. I have an altar in the healing room and I have an altar in my bedroom. And so if I've if I've got people over or something going on and I can't be in the healing room then I can go be in my bedroom. And so, so for me, it's finding that clarity and that, that, you know, that sacred space that is so important um, for me anyway, because I'm, I'm probably more sensitive than most people on this planet. And I've got to have that space to, to be clear. And then I use the medicines, the sage, the cedar, Palo Santo. I've been using 
um, cedar with um, copal, and that is phenomenal for clearing the mind and just clearing the soul. Um, and and that just just smelling it puts me in a good space. So I'm happy to share techniques. I'm happy to share what I do trial and error. I use um, rose water, hydrosol. I use crystal bowls, tuning forks, songs. Um, sometimes I put the tanupa on the altar because I need to raise the frequency. You know, we all have these tools and it's just a matter of finding what works best on, on that particular day or at that time. So. Awesome. Yeah, no, I love all of that. And it's so perfectly themed, you know, with the idea of just being sacred, you know, and just being conscious about how can I be sacred today and literally like building an altar, spending time at the altar, meditating, praying, you know, I do prayer ties. I'll, I'll load my chinooba, build her, you know, do some prayer ties. And I, I instantly feel a shift within myself and my energy around me when I do that work. And it's so beautiful. Um, and at the same time, it gives me an opportunity to pray around whatever is going on. You know, if somebody needs help, um, yeah, protection, all of those beautiful reminders. So thank you, Lili. Appreciate that. And Zoe, what would you like to add in? So I call it my um, daily hygiene. It's something I'm going to be talking more on, but hygiene is in G-E-N-E, -E, so my mind, my body, my spirit, and that's my consistent um, throughout the day. First thing I do when I get up in the morning is a little bit of movement, specific movements, which I'm, you know, passing on to others just to get the body moving, then opening up my spine, then I get into my breath work, then I'll do my meditation, then I'll do different sounding techniques for different vibration and yeah that's my go-to for the last 10 years of having to really attend to my own hygiene because then that protection is up and then when shadows or you know we see reflections of ourselves out there because it's all a reflection then I actually, you have that capacity and that ability to be able to sit within your own space to then be able to see what it is. So then you already have those inner resources for yourself. <clears throat> and then throughout the day, whatever I'm needing, if my energy feels a little bit stagnant or I feel a little bit, eh, 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 then, you know, what can I do to shift that moment to moment and really taking responsibility for that it's it's the greatest form of self-love of self-nourishment and we do have that in society where there's a lot of people giving back to others but yet they've not actually truly honored themselves and mm -hmm. that is that's when you know problems show up for people so I always feel when the more things that are showing up for you it's a beautiful indication that you're on track it's also showing you of things that you're ready to process and things you're ready to see. Um, what else do I do? Little things like I have little different altars around the house. So I've got a little altar, which is around love. And then I've got another altar in my bedroom and another altar downstairs in my healing space. And just whatever I'm feeling in that moment, not being too attached to the altar either, their little bit of fun and playfulness to create that sacred space. Salt, I use salt a lot. I put salt outside my house because I live in the city, outside my front door, outside my bedroom window. Um, I'll use sage, I'll also put salt in my body because it um, increases your electromagnetic frequency. So it assists with your energy coming up. <coughs> sage. Paleo Santos, um, incense, yeah, just whatever I'm feeling in the in the time, you know. And then you know, hydrating, good water, alkaline water, but then also not getting too hung up about that as well. I always say to people, it's more about the intention that you're feeling when you're drinking it. And I do feel a lot, you know, it's like oh, I haven't got this type of water, and it's like well. 
create the water, hold the water in your hands and send some love frequency. And why not start alchemizing and changing the water with your intention and then drinking it? And we can actually do that. So it's, you know, when you can start doing that, then you realize that you can change the entire frequency of your inner, this divine vessel that we came here to experience this human, this experience through in these vessels. So yeah, because we're crystals, right? <laughs> so yeah, that thing, lots of crystals, but this is the most divine crystal I get to bring into the world each and every day. So that's it. Awesome. Great tools. Thank you so much for sharing all of that. <laughs> Reminders for the salt and the water. And, <laughs> and also, you know, I, I like to kind of make it fun so that it's not the same every day necessarily. Yeah. So I'll tune in and ask like, okay, so what is it that I need right now? And it also helps to kind of build intuition, you know, allowing our bodies to talk to us about what do I need in this moment? And, um, it's just a fun way to explore and try and, you know, who knows what kind of tools we can bring in just by continually asking, what do I need today? Dance is a big one. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Mel. But dance is a big one. Like I'll put, a, I've got this pyramid and I put it up and I'll dance in it just for like, you know, funk, hip hop, you know, it's a little bit badass. And it's, you know, it's fun. <laughs> Changing your state, it doesn't need to be your spiritual music. It can be the most dirtiest, badass music. And it, there's something that just get yeah. So I just wanted to add that. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, right, <laughs> cool. <laughs> and Miss Melanie, what do you want to share? Yeah, you guys shared so many rich resources. I can resonate with so many of them, but I'll share a little a, a little bit differently. Um one thing I want to like that remind is just a constant reminder is, is that, you know, all is in divine right order. Everything you're being shown in your day and everything that's coming up for you is in perfect time. And if you're willing to go there, you know, great. There's going to be an unfoldment. If you're not, it'll come back around. Don't worry. You know, like that there's just, there's a divine timing and a divine readiness to all of that and what we're exploring within ourselves and, and our external world. So that's just like a constant support for me so that I don't kind of, when I do go down into a difficult spiral, um, that's kind of my go-to lean in, lean in. It's all okay. Everything's all right. The world's not going to fall apart. So just remembering that. And really recently, I mean, that, that um, we're never done with this process in our, you know, in our earth walk, we're never done with it. We're going to constantly get new challenges and the new challenges are going to, you know, build our, our, our crystalline chi and our, our crystal body. Like we will get more and more to um, be able to work with. And so there's no rush. There's no completion. It's just like to be reminded to stay, just to stay with what you can tolerate. And, um, yeah, I'll just name what's personal and up for me right now. I'm, I'm working with again, you know, cause things come back around again with more intensity. I'm working again with, um, what they call projective identification, which is, you know, this capacity because I'm psychically open and because I have mediumship abilities that when somebody comes with their stuff and they're projecting onto me, sometimes I take on a role that supports playing out this projection. Um, and, I catch myself doing something that is really out of character for me and I'm doing it in relationship to another human being. And, um, and so, yeah, this week I've been really catching myself more quickly and naming it. And, and, and for where I've come now, I'm actually working with more conscious people who are doing that. So it's easier to actually open up a dialogue and actually share and say, you know, I just said this thing, or I just acted this way. It's really out of character for me. What's going on in the story for you and, and helping them kind of own the projection. Um, gosh, it's taken a long time to be working with people that are at that level to do that because I grew up around people that were very unconscious and did that. And I, and I acted things out for their projections, you know, throughout my entire youth. So I feel really good about where I've progressed in that pattern. But um, 
yeah, t- there's been, I can like a whole handful of incidences that I could bring up this week where that's come up and I've actually really enjoyed how I've sat with that and actually reflected back to the person, their projection and it was received and there was a healing moment there. So um, sometimes we need other people. We can't do it by ourselves. You know, sometimes our shadow, a lot of our shadow stuff is um, triggered by others and the external environment. So um, you got to be gentle and, and gentle with yourself and know that you're, we're never perfect. And, and in our imperfection, we are perfect, you know, <laughs> so, so just to play, um, to play, to be gentle and, and to keep working at it because you just get stronger and you get more capacity and it's really rewarding when those, those moments happen. And I just love that you acknowledged yourself too, because how often do we do that work where we actually acknowledge ourselves, um, you know, kind of like giving ourselves a pat on the back, giving ourselves a hug for the space we hold and for the work that we do on ourselves to create change that we want to be and see and do in the world. So mm. self-acknowledgement is really, really important too. Um, and I do want to you know, it's like, it takes a a little bit of vulnerability to allow ourselves to go into the shadow work. And so Mm. I really want to be cautious too, that we're not (coughs) over something, you know, and not sugarcoating everything with, oh, just do this and burn some incense and some sage and sing a song and you know, and it'll all be light and love, you know, I mean, if we're bouncing into a trigger, and a part of us is finding that we are not okay in this moment, I mean, this is the prime fertile time to really do the work to heal the aspect of us that lost our innocence. What was the event? When was the time? When was the Um, rule applied to us when we decided that something is not okay. And we chose to take on a belief that created a pattern of behavior that is now running us subconsciously today in this moment. That's because we're triggered. We know that now. Um, So, you know, identifying that time And, you know, bringing some healing to that little child that didn't have the knowledge and the logic to apply to the moment to be, you know, have an empowering meaning of whatever that event might have been. So, you know, for me, like an example is um, because I've done a lot of shadow work and, you know, I've, I've learned some practices and ways to do that, you know, it's best if you can do that when you can go into a meditative meditative state. So kind of just stopping um, and taking a moment to breathe and ground and go inside and ask, when was the first time that I felt like this? When was the first time I felt this anger, this sadness, this deep, deep, deep grief, this shame, whatever that feeling is, find the first time we've felt that. And then start to look around, you know, like who was there? Was it your mom? Was it your dad? Was it a a parent, you know, somebody else in your family? Was it a teacher? Was it a priest? You know, someone was there that had a reaction to something that I did. And I took that moment and I decided that there's something wrong with me, or I'm not worthy of love, or I'm not good enough. um, I'm unlovable. There's, you know, I'm not special. So there's a a meaning that we make about ourselves in that moment of trauma that becomes the shadow belief. And then that is what is running us subconsciously if we do not heal it. And it's that point when it's triggered that that's the voice that starts to tell us like, oh, we can't have love or we're not worthy of love or success. Or um, it's, you better play small because you don't want to stand out and and call attention to your behavior because it's not okay. Like those are the channels of dialogues that can really get running when we're in our trigger. And that is the opposite of being in our light. We are here to be in our light. And our light is 
shining all of who we are, being in our glory, being in our gifts, because the gifts that we have are not for us, they are for others. And so if we're telling ourselves, don't do this, we're not sharing our gift. And so we're denying everyone else of their light as well. So <laughs> kind of took that on a big wing being down the road. But, you know, like an example would be, um, I remember way back when I was super little, um, I would rock myself, rock in my sleep. So I would be like on my hands and knees and you know, I'm, I'm a baby. So I'm like rocking in my sleep and I'm humming and my dad would come into the room and yank me out of the crib and spank the crap out of me because I was keeping him awake, but I was in my bliss. So I was dreaming. I was flying. I was, you know, on clouds. I was who knows where I was at, but that little baby in me was, you know, in my bliss, my innocence. And that spanking and rude awakening literally shut down a lot of that gift for me because I was at that point, like shamed and guilted and told that's bad. So that's when I lost my innocence. So the work that I'm going to be doing this month is going back into that time and, um, you know, re recognizing that, you know, it was, it was a projection on the, my, my father's projection on me. Um, who knows where he learned that from? Probably his dad and mom, parent, whoever, you know, because these are very ancestral patterns. <clears throat> and so I'm going to look for a new empowering interpretation for what that brought me. And I can, I can do that now because I'm an adult and I have the logic to do it. And, I, um, you know, I can have a lot of compassion because, you know, we're not, none of us are perfect. And so I'm going to bring some love to myself and my father um, and explore like what is the new empowering meaning of that situation for me, which it could mean, um, you know, that was the time when my light was the brightest and people need my light, but they don't know how to respond to it or, um, but it needs to be something more empowering than that. So that's the work that I'm going to be doing this month is playing in this new interpretation to empower myself into a new belief um, to the time when I can regain my innocence once again. And um, I'll share that much. If anyone else wants to chime in what you think you might wanna do this month to play in this energy of reclaiming your light and um, getting back on your sacred path or continue. May, may I ask Jen, are you still, rocking have you started that body movement up again of actually the rocking and the sounding the hum which is actually the throat chakra right mm -hmm. and it's that rocking is that's a you know to get people to soothe into their body it's very soothing and healing and that it's, it's 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 very ancient right it's actually a natural ancient practice of that rocking soothingness and the hum, the humming is the hum here, that light voice from sacral throat. Well, I'm going to do that too. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for that. Because, you know, and that's what's so great about coming together is like, I can share and be vulnerable. And then you have ideas for me. And I'm going to take that and use that. And, you know, it, it reminds me, I was in yoga not that long ago and I was doing a very similar position and kind of like rolling my body yeah. and like, oh my God, my back popped like 20 times, like all this stuff released. Mm -hmm. And so, wow, I, I, I wouldn't have put that together. So thank you for that suggestion. The child's pose as well, because you're, you're in that child's pose when you're, um, third eye is resting, forehead is resting on the earth. Also what you're doing, and for anyone that's listening, is they're shifting through things. And especially when a trauma response comes up, a fight or flight response, it's the first position I'll put someone in that they can actually self-soothe themselves and process and go through it so they can process the emotions because it's actually what we did. So... You know, it's that releasing of the visceral, it's releasing of the memory within the tissues. 
and also with the forehead on here, it flips the amygdala shit, the switch. It flips it from reaction into complete calm so then you can process and shit. Cool. <laughs> Do you want to add more, Mel? Sure. Yeah, well, your share got me really kind of scanning into this where I could imagine that. And I, well, one thing I'll just say is this, the teaching that did come through this morning was the Kuan Yin teaching and the freedom teaching and the mercy and the forgiveness teachings, right? And mm -hmm. so that's something really strong that you're speaking of when, we, when we're thinking about that loss of innocence and we're thinking about what somebody put upon us, you know? Um, it's, it's like, it's like, okay, we, we need to re-embody that freedom, right? And I thought about you, Zoeana, in your book, this freedom codes, right? Where it's like, we need to actually call that in mm -hmm. and, and remember that liberation within us and, and that way and shed that, again, it's the, the coming in on from somebody else's trauma or agenda that usually stops us in that freedom and flow. So it just kind of swings right back around to this projective identification where, you know, you're taking on your dad's trauma by receiving that. And of course you would, because you're in such a young state. And I'm just thinking about my, my father and in that, um, in that, you know, when that started, it was like, he used to call me waterworks. He used to think that I had like tears on demand when I was a child that it was a manipulative tool because he had no, he was just ignorant about child development and he was un, ignorant about, uh, he had no emotional intelligence. So, so he would think that, you know, and I forgive him for that. Like, I don't, I don't hold him. Um, he still doesn't have emotion, <laughs> emotional intelligence, you know, to the, to the level to, to be with somebody in vulnerability and death. And that, I forgive that too. That's his journey and that's his process. But I don't have to take that on anymore. I can know that my emotions and my feelings are valid. And, you know, I don't have to take on that because I'm having some tears. I'm somehow manipulating a situation. That's definitely something I've had to bear, you know, and carry with me for a long time. But yeah, I'm so ready to shed that. I'm so ready to have all my feelings and, and mm -hmm. be in that freedom ray and really allow and liberate you know, and normalize, like we have a range of emotion, you know, in our lives and to feel it fully and to let it roll and to let it flow is yeah. the natural organic way to work with your emotional body. It's not to hold, it's not <clears throat> to repress, it's actually to allow it to flow and to, to have, let it have a completion. And the more we do that, the more we actually do find that we have a stability and a centering and maybe our emotions tame themselves down. But until you actually experience the rawness of your emotions in their fullness, you can't have that regulated state. And that's my feeling. That's my opinion. So, um, yeah, thank you for bringing me there, Jen, just in your share. It's like really, really scanning and looking back at some of those projections from from our family's trauma, from other people's trauma that we that we took in and took on, took personally, and um, letting those go. Yeah, and you make some really great points just about you know the emotional intelligence, and um, you know I think it's kind of been a channel in the Piscean influence of energy. Just you know, my dad and his generation, and even most of the men that are older um, that I know. Um, men in general, I'm just going to say it. Um, they were taught to hide their feelings because boys yeah. don't cry, you Stuff know, it which, up. which is yeah. a shadow belief, you know, and, you know, crying is weakness and you can't look like a pussy, you know? And so they do hold and they do repress and suppress. And yes. I think that's why we're seeing explosive anger right now. Um, maybe more potentially with men because they've just held on to too much and it needs to come out it's and when we out. allow it to flow, then it does bring us back to zero ground, zero, zero point faster. You know, you just watch a baby and how they move through life. You know, one minute they're happy, they're giggling, they're gurgling, and then they're screaming 30 seconds later and, you know, like screaming <laughs> and crying. But if you let them scream and cry, 
for five minutes, they're back to happy and gurgly and giggly. You know, like they just move through emotions and we can learn so much from that if we allow ourselves mm. to do that. Um, mm. And we can do it with consciousness, you know, like I feel like I'm going to cry. I'm going to allow it. And I'm in the middle of mm. Costco. Okay, here we go. I'm going to stay here and cry. <laughs> I've done it. And like 30 seconds later, I'm like happy. I'm skipping down the aisle with my cart, you know, with the yeah. groceries I don't need, but. And to not yeah. apologize for it either, you yeah. know, the mi- minute I see somebody get a height, more heightened state of emotion that is, you know, sharing with me, they say, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And I'm like, for what, for what you're being a hundred percent you, I value that. Like, I want to, I want you to have your flow and, and have your completion. Don't pull it back. Don't try and rein it in and discount it. Like, yeah. Because that's the added yeah, layer is we're, we're, we're judging our emotions as wrong or right as well. Yeah. Go yeah. on, Zoe. You brought that up when you actually said that when, because I was sitting here tuning in and, you know, we've all done so much shadow work, but what actually came up was that suppressing my voice, toning it down, especially in response with the masculine of not feeling met. So I'd had experiences where I think it was about three weeks ago where I let rip. I think it was just after our last one. I let rip because I opened myself up, was vulnerable, and then I was not met and almost like not even met but ghosted. And this wild, like, well, not wild, it's my fullness of my feminine came to the table. It was just like, yeah and like it came out and you know and then it was noticing how yeah still the other person was not able to met because they were not of their emotional capacity but yet they were playing that role for them and then I caught myself noticing to go oh shit like I then felt of alignment because then I was like whoa, you know, they had this going on. I had to really nip myself in the bud. And it was actually being in space with two sisters and going, fuck, this happened. And they're like, Mm -hmm. good, go girl. Like never turn that down. And I was like, wow, this really, you know, because when you've expressed yourself so much, it's like, yeah, but you're crazy, you're wild, or you've had this label put on you. And then you've spent a lifetime like shifting those labels and rewiring it then there is there that danger that then you're not allowing all of your fullness of all your range of emotions to go here there to really come online and that came through and so it felt that's what I'm going to keep allowing to come out more and more not biting my lip you know, there is a time and a place and there's a time to let it rip. Yeah. Yeah, sister. Sometimes we got to remember. Yeah. Because then that's the divine reflection I also found in myself. It was actually my inner masculine within that had been, you know, you're so strong, you're such a strong woman. So then you tone that down, right? Because you're like, I always want to be, allow my feminine to come through. But yeah, it's that inner protector that didn't feel protected or didn't feel heard or was not met yeah and I love that you say there's a time and a place too because you will really start to find your community when you do get met and if you're not getting met in your fullness of expression you know instantly that's not a person that I want to be spending my time with because they can't be with all of me you know and and things start to shift that way. And those, those processes are hard to kind of have those re- realizations of like, it Oh, got wow. Closed very quick. It got closed very quick. It was instant. Yeah. yeah. But then I have to be mindful how quick I can do that. Like I can call and block people like blank. And I even forget their name the next day. So I <laughs> must, which is like the forgetfulness, which I used to think that was a curse. I actually think it's a gift. Yeah. Good. <laughs> <laughs> but then that. also to stay with the emotion and and mm. you know be real about the emotion and where that was coming from 
Mm. Yeah. And I think the more with time and doing this work and, and, you know, the progression, the ascension, we move from being reactive to more responsive. Mm. And, um, you know, that in and of itself is consciousness too. So moving into yes. how, how do I respond? I'm really triggered right now. I need to take a moment so I don't literally rip somebody's face off. Um, how can I respond to this? But still being able to say all the things I need to say, um, whether it's to them or just into the space somewhere. Um, so there are, you know, there, there's a lot of, you know, intricacies to this work and, you know, yeah. and how we feel met and how we feel heard. Um, but yeah, I, I don't like to match fire with fire. Um, no. I like, Light a lot of, you know, like it's, it's a little bit different energy, you know, like mm -hmm. maybe the, I'm the water to the fire mm -hmm. <laughs> or I'm there, I'm the fire and they're my water. Um, but, but yeah, hey, so, ladies, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta take off for today, but awesome. I loved this conversation. Thank you great. so much. It's been amazing. All right. Sisters. All right. See awesome. you on the Thank full you. moon. See you next week. Right? Yeah. Love <laughs> you. See you again next time. Bye. Yeah, and in fact, I was planning to kind of just kind of wrap us up. And I loved one of the things that Melanie said too, because she talked about freedom um, and, and part of what she was sharing. And I forget how she was applying that, but she was also talking about like the freedom ray. And, and I was like, oh yeah, we're in the energy of Arcturus right now. And they're the bringers of the freedom ray. And so how perfect mm -hmm. is that to come in right now too, as a um, part of what we can call upon you know, when working with the Firefly, we're calling in the Firefly Nation to help us um, assist us on our spiritual path and, you know, work with us um, healing our innocence and calling in the Arcturus energy to, you know, maybe bring us greater freedom um, through this asking. Um, so, yeah, I just, you know, if there's any more you want to share real quick, we can put that in and then we'll, we'll wrap up and, and move on to our moon. Can I mention an event that I'm running in Sydney next Saturday yeah. and then also down in Adelaide? And that's about, well, returning to our innocence. It's called Ignite the Inner Healer, you know, and it's that whole journey of working with the body and really finding that sense of freedom within ourselves and then also within our lives so that's a little event that I'm running that's on my website can I mention that yeah please um so it's called ignite the healer within so my website is zoe-anna.com go to workshops and then you'll see them listed under that so I've got a few spaces left for workshops going to be a week today in Sydney Cool. Oh, that sounds amazing. Yeah, I'm excited. It's been a while. It's been a while facilit not facilitating with this long gap. So yeah, I'm excited to really get into that space again. Beautiful and awesome timed, of course, the synchronicity and, and how we're already in alignment with where we need to be <clears throat> and bringing it in. So thank you for doing that work. Yeah. And yeah, and with me, you can find me at EdenArising.com as well as StarKnowledge.org. I'm going to be hosting a Galactic Goddess Gathering where we're going to talk more, um, again, closer to the full moon, um, similar to our topic today, and just kind of having a little bit of a support group and um, exploring ways that we continue in this ascension process. And um <clears throat> And also to just throwing it out there, I'm a shadow coach and a healing your heart coach. And if you're finding yourself wanting to do the work to heal the shadow, um, this is a passion that I have and I love to do that work. So I'm offering that up as well this month. And you can find my contact information in EdenArising.com. That's E-D-E-N-A-R-I-S-I-N-G.com. So on that note, thank you for joining us tonight um, or today on this um, we're a little bit, a few days into the new moon, but this is going to be a really powerful moon cycle and so much is at, at play right here. And I think we're going to see some amazing beauty come our way real soon. So thanks again, and we'll see you next time.